Hey, what's up, guys? Happy Wednesday. So today we're going to uh, I'm going to go over some new material, which is the bureaucracy, the bureaucracy. OK, that's how you pronounce this word, the federal bureaucracy. So as you uh, go through this and as I go through this, you're going to complete the notes so you can pause it throughout while I speak and then just type in the notes as we go along. So again, this is a uh, part of unit two that I usually teach in unit four, but since we're not covering unit four before the test, I want to go back and teach the federal bureaucracy. I apologize. This video is going to kind of be kind of long, but we need to cover this new material. So here we go. Let's go into it. Again, just fill in the blanks as I go through these basics on your note sheet. A good idea might to put up this on one side and then your notes on the other side of your screen if you know how to do that. <clears throat> so let's kick it off here. So the federal bureaucracy, what is it? The federal bureaucracy performs three primary tasks in government, implementation, regulation, and administration of policy. Okay, the bureaucracy is a part of the executive branch. They are the ones that actually carry out and enforce policy. Okay, that policy could be through laws made by legislative branch or policy directives from the president. Okay, when Congress passes a law and is signed by the president, they set down guidelines to carry out the new policies. This is the implementation phase. Okay, example, if Congress passes a law that makes it illegal to pollute the Great Lakes, an executive agency must make sure the law is being followed. Laws are just, you know, words on paper. So when Congress passes a law, there's nothing more than, you know, sheets of paper that say, here's a law. What makes the law actually be followed is the bureaucracy. Okay, and that's, um, they are sometimes considered the fourth branch of government because they are so large and so powerful. Okay, continuing on with the basics. Okay, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, is a bureaucratic agency tasked with enforcing environmental laws by issuing fines and conducting ex inspections. So if Congress passes a law that, you know, uh, limits certain pollutants that can go into a waterway, uh, the EPA will have to go and inspect and make sure that these regulations are being followed. To put it simply, the bureaucracy is the executive agencies and departments that enforce the laws passed by Congress and directives issued by the president. Okay, again, real simply put, the bureaucracy is the executive agencies and departments that enforce the laws passed by Congress and directives issued by the president. <clears throat> these are the executive departments. So there's 14 executive departments. Each one of these has a secretary, which is chosen by the president and then approved by the Senate. Okay. Um, I put in yellow some of the ones I'm going to do more detail on because these are the larger ones. Okay. So Department of Defense, there's nothing to write down in the notes here. Uh, just I want to go over a couple of these. Just listen as I go through. So the Department of Defense used to be called the Department of War under uh, the original Constitution. Um, now it's not actually in the Constitution, but under the under uh, George Washington, the first cabinet position was called the Department of War. This is the Department of Defense. It's basically the Department of the Military. It employs 1.3 million people. This includes all branches branches of the military. They carry out military and foreign policy of the United States. Okay, their budget is $686 billion in 2019. Okay, another example, the bureaucracy is the Depart Department of Human Health and Services. Okay, their budget is $1.046 trillion in mandatory spending and $69 billion in discretionary funding. We talked about uh, discretionary versus mandatory spending a long time ago. We'll review that probably sometime this week uh, to, to when we review the branches. It employs about uh, 79,000 people. And they provide services to the public. This is the, the agency that deals with processing Medicaid and Medicare and uh, the uh, food stamps, federal food stamps, child health, uh, child health care programs, all the, all the programs and services that um, kind of provide to the needy. The, these safety social net, these safety net programs are provided through the Department of Health and Human Services. And their goal is also to keep the public healthy. Okay, the CDC is also part of the Department of Health and Human Services, the Centers for Disease Control. So the main goal of the Department of Health and Human Services is to keep Americans healthy. Department of Homeland Security, this is the newest executive department. This was created right after 9-11. So this is, you know, not, uh, not even 20 years old yet. The budget in 2019 was $47.5 billion. Uh, they employ about 240,000 people. 
Their job is to prevent attacks on American soil by collecting intelligence. Intelligence is just information and instituting surveillance programs. Okay. So at the federal level, they are kind of the shadow group that tries to uh, make sure there's no attacks in the United States. The EPA, okay, this is not actually part of any executive department. Uh, it's what's called an independent regulatory agency. So they're independent of the legislative and executive branches. Their budget's $8.2 million. Uh, they employ about 14,000 people. Their job is to enforce environmental laws and regulations to make sure the nation's air and water is protected. So the point of me showing you these three examples, four examples, however many it was, was so you can kind of see specific examples of the bureaucracy. How... Uh, what agencies, what departments are there, and what is their job? What part of policy, uh, carrying out policy, do they have to take care of? Okay, and again, like I said, this DP is not a part of any executive department or independent agency. It's an independent agency. Okay, so let's break down kind of this whole thing from big to small. There's parts of the notes, excuse me, parts of the notes that you need to complete for this part. Uh, so to break it down from big to small, so at the top, kind of the umbrella is the executive branch. Okay, under that, the federal bureaucracy is a part of the executive branch. We have those 14 departments are the 14 executive departments. Then underneath that, you have agencies. My cats are going crazy. Uh, you have agencies. So executive branch and then department and then agency is the biggest to the smallest. So let's look at an example, a real world example here so this can be more clear. President Trump extended the social distancing guidelines for another month. Okay, so that's an executive action. Now, when the executive makes uh, a directive, that could be through guidelines or through an executive order or through an executive agreement. Okay, but anytime the executive or the legislative branch writes a law, okay, it's up to the bureaucracy to then carry out those directives or laws. So in this case, where Trump extends the social distancing guidelines, the Department of Health and Human Services has jurisdictions has jurisdiction over this. Um, over this uh, directive, okay? Now, within the Department of Health and Human Services, you have the agency, which is the CDC. The Centers for Disease Control will actually go into the field and test people, advise doctors, do research, collect data, develop a vaccine, et, et cetera. Okay, so again, it goes from the executive or the legislative branch laws, and then it has, we have a department whose jurisdiction that is, and then an agency who's actually going out and completing the policy um, implementation. Okay. So why don't you pause your video right now and do that part on the questions on this part of the video. Let's break it down from big to small. So I'd pause the video and answer those questions. Okay. And we're back. <clears throat> so side note. Okay. The DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles, is the classic example of the bureaucracy. This is a state department, not federal, however. The bureaucracy in the US is notoriously slow and inefficient and difficult to deal with. Okay, peep, I'm sure your parents know, maybe even you know, you've been to the, you've been to the, uh, the, the DMV, you know how slowly they operate, how kind of convoluted it is, how difficult they are to deal with. Okay, businesses big and small complain of overregulation, too much regulation, People claim big businesses and small businesses claim that this stifles their ability to grow economically and to make more money, to increase profits, inc increase the number of employees they have. They say too much regulation stifles that economic growth. Okay, this next part, I'm going to show you this little video clip. This is going to be of Donald Trump uh, cutting some red tape. Red tape just means regulations and paperwork. So you see here, this is 1960. This is all the federal regulations that existed in 1960. This is the regulations that exist today. These are all the regulations of the executive departments printed out on paper to kind of, obviously he's trying to make a point here of how uh, we overregulate our, our, over our country. So in this little video clip, it's just gonna show him clipping this ribbon and he's gonna talk a little bit about um, why, what this represents. To fly a rocket ship, you need to be an optimist. No astronaut launches for space. So together, let's cut the red tape. 
Let's set free our dreams. And yes, let's make America great again. And one of the ways we're going to do that is by getting rid of a lot of unnecessary regulation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Come on over here. What do we all gather around? Come on. You're all such a big part of this. Come on, man. So this is what we have now. This is where we were in 1960. And when we're finished, which won't be in too long a period of time, we will be less than where we were in 1960. And we will have a great regulatory climate. Okay? Come on up here, Chris. You work so hard. Elaine, are you okay? You okay? Yep. There's a lot to do with it. There's things called roads. So big and bridges, right? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. All right, guys, and we're back. So now, last part of this uh, lecture, just, just give you something to think about to kind of break this down, maybe a little bit more simply to have you thinking about this. So think about this. What I want you to do is think about the bureaucracy in the sense of ordering a delivery pizza. Okay, what could pizza possibly have to do with the bureaucracy? Well, let's find out. Okay, well, first you need to call or use the internet to order. How's the bureaucracy involved in that? Well, the FCC, the Federal Communication Commission, regulates internet and phone providers. Okay, the government, state, especially federal, has a large degree of regulation over the internet and over our cell phones, okay, and the providers that provide uh, the service to us. Uh, you need a restaurant to order from. Well, restaurants must receive local permits and be inspected by state health agencies, okay? This is usually done at the local level for restaurants. You need food. Okay, food is inspected by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, for safety before it's ever sold. You need to pay taxes, and the driver needs to be paid by their employer. So labor laws must be adhered to. And economic transactions are taxed by federal and state agencies. You pay uh, even on, del on delivery food. Okay, you're going to be paying a sales tax. Okay, you need a driver to deliver. State law enforcement and the Department of Transportation regulate traffic laws. Okay, so just in the basics of when you order a pizza, when you pick up your phone to call or to use Uber Eats, the bureaucracy is heavily involved in that process. We do very little in the United States on a day-to-day -day -day basis where the bureaucracy is not involved in our life. So at face value, these things may seem like there's no government involvement. However, when you break it down, there's lots of government involvement and the bureaucracy is the one that is involved. Okay, so you pause the video and answer that question in two sentences. You need to explain what ordering a pizza has to do with the bureaucracy. So go ahead and pause the video and uh, answer that question. Okay, and we're back. Now, the last part of this lesson is the assignment. Okay, so this assignment, you're going to be researching two different bureaucratic agencies or departments. So, use the link in the attached Google Doc. You can find that in the Google, in the, uh, Google Classroom post uh, to research two departments or agencies of your choice. You will research two executive departments or agencies using their actual website. So on the website I provided, you find the department or agency that you're researching. You click that, and then it will give you a page that you have to click uh, to go to their actual web page. You'll see. It'll make more sense once you click the link. You will answer three questions on each department or agency. Okay, the federal departments or agencies that uh, you might be interested in researching. These are kind of uh, common in the media. Um, and uh, it might be of interest to you, some of these agencies. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, that is part of the bureaucracy. Okay, any of the branches of the military, the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, okay, all, all of those branches of the military are technically part of the bureaucracy. You can research one of those if you want. The CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, okay. The DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency, the Department of Veterans Affairs, the VA, maybe some of you have parents or family members that are veterans and you're interested in researching that agency. The CDC, this is in the news, obviously, with uh, COVID-19, Centers for Disease Control, you can research that. 
The Department of Commerce is the last one. If you're into economics, uh, if you want to be a business major, this might be something you want to uh, research. So these are your options. Uh, if you look at the Google Doc, there's further directions and uh, what you actually have to do for the assignment. Make sure the notes are completely filled out. The questions on this lecture are filled out and make sure that you do this assignment. This is all due. Uh, I'm giving you today, Thursday and Friday. So it's not this assignment. This whole thing is not due until Friday at midnight. Friday at midnight. Okay, guys. Hope you all have a great Wednesday and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.